I guess 2024 is the year of pro babies. First, we have scrambled, and now we have babes. Are you a babe? Am I allowed to say that? Let's find out. Chase Liaki here, Blue Futon Reviewing Babes. This is the Monday Movie Mystery Movie. Monday Movie, sure, why not? What's about pre simple premise? You have two best friends. One of them is on their second kid, but one of them is single with no kids. And now all of a sudden, the single one, one night stand, uh-oh, a baby's on the way, and the one with the two kids is trying to figure out her life of just shenanigans, work, home life, work, home life, husband, baby stuff. And so, now, are their friendship going to stay intact? Because the single one was always dependent on the one with the family. We will find out. So, did I like this movie? I thought it was okay. Uh, Here's the thing. So, going into this movie, I think I saw the trailer once, if I'm not mistaken. And on the movie Reddit, Regal Movie Reddit, I hate Reddit, Reddit's a cesspool. People were talking shit about this movie. So, I did go in kind of with a, oh, shit, is it going to be one of these type of movies where it's not that funny? And while there are some chuckable moments, there was nothing that had me laughing out loud because some of the jokes got repetitive, especially when you keep getting vagina jokes, pussy jokes, nipple jokes. And a lot of the, let's put it, improv wasn't that great. It kind of dragged on some scenes. However, there were some decent comedic moments here and there. I think the overall message is good, and it did have a solid ending. So when we talk about the positives, let's talk about the solid ending first. Go from, you know, backwards, forwards. I think it's good. Uh, it's a solid ending about friendship as a whole. Even though I'm one of the suckers that every time I watch an HGTV show where the friends are like, I only can move 10 miles away because I'm, I have to be closer to my friends. I'm like, that is not how I see life. I see life as how are you living it? How is your immediate family living it? And I'm going to live closer to them. Close is kind of, you know, if you want to put it that way, because growing up, it was like Michigan, Hawaii, Illinois, Ohio, Florida, New Mexico. So we were all over the place. We were never one of those closeness families where it's like, oh, we live on the same block. And I just never liked that or never thought it was a good idea in general. But what do I know? But um, yeah. Speak about the HGTV thing, it's like, if you're going to roll in and spend half a million dollars just because you're not 10 minutes close to your friend and not 20 minutes, you're high on crack cocaine or in this movie, mushrooms. All right, so some of the jokes. There were some funny jokes about the omen or about, you know, hair plugs. There were funny comedic elements in this movie that made me chuckle here and there. But with that, there are more ones that were more cringeworthy, which we will get to that pretty soon. I think the acting is fine. Even though, like I said, it, the improv and the overall goofiness of it kind of didn't match what the overall movie was trying to do. Because like I said, there is a serious tone in this movie about friendship, kids, parenthood, uh, star-crossed lovers. Like there is some interesting themes in this movie where it makes you think about, okay, where am I going on with life? And I enjoy that spot. All right. And then New York. Uh Fuck living in New York City. I can never do it. It just looks miserable. Like, that that small corner lot is probably like $5 million. That's disgusting. Disgusting. So anyone that wants to live in these cities like LA and, you know, New York City, I, I couldn't do it even though there's a chance I am moving to LA for my job, you know, start of next year, uh, but only for like two or three years. So... I might live that L.A. apartment lifestyle and have to get rid of this house. But it is what it is. Because I ain't buying in fucking California. I can promise you that. I ain't paying those dumbass taxes. I'm not coming to resident anyway. But anyway. Alright. So comparing this movie to other movies. Like I'm going to compare it to Hot Rod. And you're thinking what the hell Chase. Alright Hot Rod. Remember that cool bean? Was that cool cool beans. Cool beans. Beans beans. Cool. And. The thing with that scene, it worked in that movie because the whole movie was shenanigans. The whole movie didn't have different serious tones or themes. It was all bullshit. It was all slapstick and it worked. Here, they wanted to add that weird hot rod bridesmaids humor and it didn't work. The thing with bridesmaids, I know people are comparing it to this. 
Bridesmaids had a theme, an overarching theme, and it didn't divert from it, and the comedy was consistent throughout. Not the case with this movie. You would have, like I said, instead of cool beans, like, bitch, 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 bitch. It would do that for like 45 seconds. You're like, this doesn't really match what you're trying to do. And there's weird improv things with a camera shoot. Uh, improvs talking about nipples, about vaginas, about pussy. Um, you know, just things like that where it kind of got old pretty damn quick. And I was just thinking, is this what we're going off of? Like, I don't mind fart jokes. I don't mind it being like, okay, that's a good fart joke and that's a running theme. And it's that. Here, it just didn't work because something with fart jokes is a fart. Oh, shit, that's funny. And it's like, you know, juvenile humor. Here, it just got to like, oh, my nipple is like folding a fitted sheath. Or like, you know, and you're just like, okay, I maybe I don't get it because I'm a dude, but just some humor like that didn't fit with me as well. The movie theater as a whole, I'm gonna say it was a mix. Some people are laughing their vaginas off, and other people are just kind of chuckling like me. And like I said, there's like I said, I laughed at the omen scene. I laughed at a couple of scenes in the movie as a whole, but I think Babes has a strong message, a good ending, and an overall good premise of what they're trying to do. However, some pacing issues, themes galore just didn't work for me. And sometimes one or two vagina pussy jokes are fine. But when it stretches to 20 to 30, the improv kind of needs to change. God, this is actually a hard one for me to do, review because this is a five movie for me. And what I mean by that is I usually go like the 50s, 60s, 70s. This is such a five movie where it's in between. So I'm trying to think if I want to go to the lower end or to the higher end babes will receive a three and a half out of five of food times it goes at 70 percent so see the critics and you scores gave this one so critics we're at a 100 percent with 21 of them uh there's already a critic consensus okay for 21 reviews kind of sketch as shit um offering an uproariously unvarnished look at motherhood and female friendship babes fine Pamela Adome making a sure future length director debut with a big assist from stars Ela Gazer and Michelle Butois. If I'm saying that correctly, sure. Uh, I think. So I went with the 70 case. Okay, so yeah. It, hmm, okay. I, yeah, the humor wasn't there, but I think the story uplifts it a little bit more. God. Living in New York just seems miserable. 170. Chase Lock here with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. One of the things, Blue Tontopia. Topia. You Blue Tones think what's a great day on Quartz Take tomorrow, week from now, month, or a year from now. I've ever seen a freaking one of you. Really, 100% with 21 of them. And with the audience review, we have a 1 out of 5, a 2 out of 5, and that's it for now. Hmm.